Michaela Lewis. Maxwell, tell me the truth. What are you doing over here? I asked with gritted teeth. You are not invited over here. I don't want to see you again like ever. Well, you are saying something but your heart and body is saying something else, baby girl. Maxwell said taking steps forward with a sexy smirk on his face, then looked down at my belly that I was trying to hide behind the table. Does he know of the baby? Is he here to take the baby from me? I thought scared. Like I said earlier, I came to take you back home with me, Kyles. You and our baby belongs with me. Yes, all this time I knew of the baby. And, for now, we are going to celebrate your birthday. Then we are going to talk, and I am going to explain everything. And, by everything I mean everything and after knowing that the only person you need to be angry with will be me because I asked your friends to look after you. Friends, what friends? I have got family member over air no friends, except for Jacob and Anna. I snapped then realization hit me, and I looked at both of them, who looked down at their feet in guilt and murmured sorry. You two. You two were working for him all this time. All this time, you both were reporting to him about me. Didn't you? And don't you dare lie to me about anything. I then looked at Maxwell. You need to get out of here. I don't want to see you or your face. I want you to leave me alone and never return. You are dead to me. Spend a happy life with my bitch of a mother, because you chose her over me in the end. You even didn't try to stop me, defend me or say anything. You are just like Nicole. I will never ever call her mother again, because she is dead to me. She is just Nicole just like you are just a bastard. Don't say the things you don't mean, baby girl. I stayed silent and didn't ask you to stay for a reason. I was trying to protect you. I was trying to protect you from every single person that wanted to harm you. I wanted to send you far away from there because if I had asked you wouldn't have listened to me. So I used this way. And it worked, because Nicole and I are divorced. Now, I took care of Nicole and Eric. They both are never going to come back into your life. I give you my word. Maxwell said in a low and calm manner, with guilt of letting me go in his life. Baby girl, I can never hurt you because that's the last thing I want to do, please. Give me a chance and let me in your and our baby's life. You divorced mom. When and how? Wasn't she T-H-R-E? I stopped myself from saying that and sighed, Okay, I will talk to you, but, first, I need to talk to Jacob and Anna because I trusted them when I refused to trust anyone and they betrayed me like everyone. No, Kayla. We didn't want to do that and we never betrayed you we were just doing what we were asked to do and trust and we really consider you as our best friend and sister. Anna stepped forward with misty eyes. I love you, Kyles. I love you like a sister I never had. I want to be alone right now. Uncle Ron and Edwa, please, make sure no one follows me. I said to Uncle Ron and Edwin, then looked at Bloom. Did you bring you car? Can I borrow it? Sure thing, but please let me come with you. I don't want you to be alone. I promise I will be there. But you won't even realize. I am not there you want space. I will give you the space. But please let me with you. Bloom pleaded, then glared at Maxwell. Either way you hurt her. Don't you beg. You left her when she was pregnant and all alone. I didn't I didn't want to leave her. But it was Nick Asseri, that time, I did it to protect her. Maxwell snapped. Then you should have told us. Not ghosted her. Not left her alone. Edwin snapped back. I am a man too and if I will ever do this to Bloom, then first, 
I will make sure to make some arrangements, tack to her family, and explain them not ghost her, and her family, without saying a fucking thing from my mouth. You are not good for her just leave her alone and let it be. Don't waste your energy on him, Edwin. He is not worth it. I tell Edwin while glaring at Maxwell with venom in my eyes. How dare he show up like this and still demand like he did not do anything wrong with me. I then glared at Jacob and Anna, who mouthed sorry and looked down at their feet guilty. It's not their fault I asked them to keep an eyes on you and stay close to you at every point. Maxwell defended them. I huffed and rolled my eyes because I didn't want to listen to him anymore. I just need to get out of here at every cost. I can't bear to see his face. Shut up, Maxwell. Don't you dare emit another word from your mouth. No one wants you here. Especially me and as for the baby it's only mine. I can take care of it alone. You don't hold a single right on him, her. I shout breathing heavily because my anger was taking over me. The hell it is. I have the same right on him her jut, like you have. He growled, Maxwell Collins. I couldn't leave my woman alone, like this, when she is pregnant with my child, and looking sexy, as fuck and angry at the same time. I don't want her to do anything reckless and be alone at this time, when she is feeling betrayed by every single person over here and I don't know what she will do to me when I tell her the biggest secret I have been keeping from her. Will she forgive me? Will she accept me in her life? Should I tell her that Drake Gavins never died? Should I tell her that he is alive, but still fighting between life and death? I know I am being selfish and right now, I need to blackmail her again to be with me. I will explain her everything later when the time is right, because right now is not the time. I moved Bloom away because she was blocking my woman's view from me and stepped closer to Kayla and get down to her ear level and whispered in her ears. You are coming right now with me and listening to what I have to say, or else I will tell everyone over here. What crime did you commit, and from what you are running from? I blackmailed her once again, and as much as I hate to do that, but I know that's the only weakest point she has. She glared at me with pure hatred and anger and stomped on my foot. Go to hell. I am not scared anymore. Just do whatever you want. Tell whoever you want to tell, because guess what? I am not the weak Kayla Lewis you expect me to be I have changed. I have became strong, wealthy and the most powerful person in the world. Do you know why? Because today I inherited my father's wealth. You can address me by Miss Kayla Lewis from now on. Nothing else. I am wealthier than you, powerful than you and hold much better sources and connections in my hands now. So... Do whatever you want and watch me by the whole damn police and the law. She threatened me. There is nothing a money can't resolve and trust me. I have got plenty of it now. She whispered. If you don't believe me then you can ask my Inos Ron about it. She said holding me by chin and turned me around to face Uncle Ron. Then made me face back at her. I will do anything for my baby and guess what? I am going to tell what I did myself, because in the end it was an accident this time. It should be you who should be scared, because if I committed the crime, you helped me in hiding it which makes both of us even. Now, do whatever you want to do but first tell me, what do you mean by you were not just protecting me from Nicole, but Eric too? Isn't he in jail? She asked with a raised brow, and damn, if that woman didn't turn me on by showing this new side of hers. I know I should be scared of her, because she looked like an ice princess with cold heart. What have I done to her? I fear that I might have turned her into a monster.
I looked at her facial expression closely and let out a chuckle. This woman sucks at hiding her expressions from me. She is trying really hard to make me believe, but she knows she is failing at it. Kayla Lewis Maxwell looked at me shocked and tried to judge me because I was doing a really good job in hiding my facial expressions. I was trying to be hard and tough in front of him, while from inside I was broken, hurt, heartbroken and scared at the same time, because a crime is a crime in the end. You can't run away or hide from it. The words you just said earlier, do you really mean them, baby girl? Maxwell asked me with a racid brow. I know you better than anyone over here, because I sure as hell know you are masking your expressions, and don't mean a single thing you just said. No, I mean everything I just said. I lied on his face, when he let out a chuckle, and his next move paralyzed me on my place. He placed his hand on my belly, where our baby was growing which caused an electric spark in my body, and my heart beat to fasten up. Why can't I hate this man and stop feeling emotions towards him? Why? Now, tell me that you mean every word, Kayla. He said placing my hand on top of his on my belly. Swear on our baby's life and tell me that you mean every word you just said. Maxwell said in a low voice. I stayed silent, because I couldn't bring myself to say it. I love my baby more than anything and for it I will do or go on any level. Maxwell, leave her alone, or I swear I will kill you. Bloom said hitting Maxwell on his back, with the serving spoon that was placed on the table. Maxwell, let out a his of pain, and turned around to look at Bloom with a raised brow. And, you think you can kill me with a serving spoon, Bloom? Really? Maxwell asked with amusement, then looked at her husband. Would you mind controlling your wife over here, buddy? I am trying to have a serious conversation over here, with my soon-to-be wife and my baby's mama. I am not going to be your wife and this baby only belongs to me. I snapped. So you can go and foo fork yourself. Well, already acting like a good mother. I see. Maxwell said with an amused laugh. I like it. I always knew you will make a good mother and a very good wife, but a stubborn one. But don't worry. I know how to control you, baby girl. He said placing the bouquet of lower and chocolates on the table, then scooped me up in his arms, bridal style very carefully. No, put me down. Put me down, Maxwell. Leave me alone. I shout hitting on his chest. Uncle Ron, Bloom and Edwin tried to stop Maxwell, when out of nowhere his guards entered and hold them back. Maxwell carried me out of the hotel to his car where Xavier was already waiting for us, holding the gate open for us. When he saw me he gave me a nod in respect and smiled at me. I ignored him because I was too occupied in saving myself from the beast. You beast. Leave me alone and let me go. You don't want to mess with me. I am done with you and I hate you. I freaking hate you. I shout when he stopped only to look into my eyes. No, you love me but angry at me because I hurt you. But I promise, I will make it up to you for everything I did and put you through. And, this beast is taking his beauty to the palace where she belongs we are leaving from here today. Maxwell announced making me raise my hand in the air and slap on his face. You just can't come out of nowhere and order or blackmail me around. I am a free woman, not your puppy or anything. I am not your slave, so show me respect, and I am not going anywhere from here. I have just settled and started my life over here. I have got a shop over here.
I have got peace over here, and you are not going to ruin it. I am not going to ruin it any more, because I don't need you in my life. Any more so go away, and never return. Leave me alone. I don't want to see your face. I yelled. But too bad. I want to see your face every day and every night. So, you are coming with me whether you like me or not. We are not done. We can never be done, because I won't let that happen. With that sigh Maxwell took me inside the car and shut the door after caging me with his body. Xavier, lock the car and drive to the airport. Tell the pilot and ask him to keep the jet ready for us. He ordered Xavier who listened to his boss's order and did as he was asked to do. No, no. I yelled. Unlock the car. Unlock it. I don't want to go. Calm down, Kayla. The stress is not good for the baby. Your BP can go high. Maxwell tried to calm me down. I am not going to do anything to you. You know I mean no harm to you. That's the last thing I want to do. No, I don't believe you. You are trying to play with me yet again. You don't want me. You just want the baby. Your ear. Mom was right about one thing. You just used me for the baby now that you came to know that I am pregnant with your child. You came to take me and acting like you care about me. I know you better than that now. Max, you will kick me out of the house or get me disappeared once I give birth to your baby. I cried and looked at Maxwell looking at me stunned. Is that what you think of me, Kyles? Maxwell asked hurt and looking upset. Kayla Lewis. Maxwell, I really mean it. I really don't want to come with you unless you give me a real reason to come back. I said to Maxwell when he scooped me up and made me sit on his lap in a gentle manner and hugged me tightly to him and placed a kiss on my head. The only true reason, the reason from deep inside my heart. The reason you need to know is that I love you and only you, my woman, trust me, there is no other woman I need in my life other than you. You are the only one I need in my life. I don't want anything of anyone. He said cupping my FCE while looking into my eyes. I did all this to keep you safe. I let you go only to keep you safe. To keep you protected. I don't just want the baby. I want you more than the baby. Everything comes second to me and you come first. You will always come first. So, are you saying you don't want the baby? I asked panicked and placed my hand on my belly protectively. What? No I mean yes. I want the baby I want the whole package with you and, trust me I am over the moon. I am so happy that we are going to be parents. And. I am more than happy knowing that you are the one who is carrying my baby our baby. He tells me sincerely and genuinely, but I couldn't trust him any more. If he was protecting me at least, he could have tried to contact me and tried to explain me. It's not like my mom is that strong to keep him away from making a phone call to. I don't believe you. Max will. No matter how much you try to make me believe in you. Trust you again it is not easy or more like possible, because I am getting tired of all this. I trusted you. I trusted you more than anyone and that day I stood. I just stood there waiting for you to take my side. But you didn't how would you feel like, when one moment you are getting proposed, and the other moment you are getting ignored, and betrayed by the same person, who just proposed and promised so many things for the future. You showed me the true future right then, and there when you decided to stay silent, and not making a single move to stop me, when I was leaving the house. I was there for fifteen minutes after mom threatened. I Washington spacking the bag, and everything which took me good fifteen minutes. In those fifteen minutes, you could have come to Stopey, but you didn't you just ghosted me in a way, and deep down you knew, I could be pregnant, because it was your intention. Was it or was it not? I asked. You you are thinking, 
I cut him off. Don't you dare lie to me, Max will. Tell me the fucking truth for God's sake, was it your intention or not? I demanded. Yes, it was but for a good reason. I wanted to pregnant you so that you will never leave me. I am a selfish bastard when it comes to you. I can't lose you, and I can't let any harm come near you, which is why I pushed you away only to protect you and the baby, and do you know I was on the moon, when Jacob and Anna informed you that you are pregnant, I wanted to come over there and shower you with happiness, and celebrate the biggest happiness of our life together, but I couldn't because I was too close to bring your mother and Eric on the ground, but... You can ask Anna and D. Jacob that I ask them to take really good care of you and make sure you eat and rest well. I asked Anna to be your OBGYN and keep me posted regarding you and the baby's health even when we were apart. Baby girl, you were always in my heart and mind. I didn't sleep a single night properly because you weren't there with me and even I didn't sleep with your mother if you think that she slept in other room because I refused to sleep or have sex with her. She listened to me as long as I wasn't keeping any contact. With you I couldn't take any risk. I was just being cautious. Maxwell explained taking my hand in his. Trust me, baby girl. I did all this for you, for our baby, for us, for our future. Please, I beg you to forgive me and give me another chance, and I promise you that I will spend my whole life making up to you. He pleaded. I want to believe him, I really do, but this time, it is not just me. If I give him an chance, and he still ended up doing this then, it won't only be my heart he will be breaking, he will be hurting our baby too and I couldn't let anything happen to my baby. He she is the only person who I can trust on and love him her, without having any fear of getting rejected or betrayed. Maxwell Collins. I need time. Maxwell. I can't just trust you this easily, and forgive, I can't forget everything like they didn't happen, because they did and I suffered in them it's not only me this time this time. I don't need to protect my felines. Only I need to protect my baby and his her feelings too. What if you leave me one day and the baby is left fatherless? I don't want my baby to suffer in any way like I did. I want to give him her all the happiness it deserves. She tells me with tears in her eyes. I don't hate you, Max will. I can never hate you, but I can't trust you this easily again. I need time to get over with the things that I suffered. Let me live over here for a few more months and refresh my mind. I don't like New York because it brings me back the memories. I am running from I want to start my company in California. I want to give birth to my baby in California. First of all, it is not only yours baby, baby girl. It's ours and if you want time, then I am ready to give it but I am not going anywhere I am staying with you. And, it's not only you who suffered in the past months, because I suffered too I suffered every moment and second. When you weren't with me, I suffered every moment. When I came to know that you are pregnant with my baby, and I can't be there with you to celebrate the biggest happiness of our lives, I couldn't be there to take care of you myself, when I wanted to do that so bad. But I need to get rid of Nicole and Eric for you, for us, for a happy life. You know I always appreciate you in everything so if you want to stay here for a few months you can. If you want to give birth to the baby in California, then we will do that. If you want to start the company over there then we will do that and I will stand by your side in everything. Because I promise you that I am never ever going to leave you alone or our baby. I promised her when she smiled and hugged me tight, and I hugged her back with tears in my eyes, because finally I have got what I need in my life the most. But, can this happiness last long? 
Will she accept me when she finds out the biggest secret I am keeping from her? And should I tell her that what her mother did and why she hates he the most? Should I tell her that Nicole is not her mother because her biological mother was killed by her own father when she was just a newborn baby? Kayla loves her father so much and if I tell her then, she will end up hating her father. She will hate her father, but at the same time, she will want revenge from Nicole to because she killed him. No matter how much she is going to hate a her father, she will hate Nicole more because she did not just kill Xander, but hired Eric to play with her, pretend to love her and torture her for the whole life only because Nicole considers Kayla the reason for her sister's death. She thinks that if Kayla hadn't cried unstopped that night, then her sister would have been alive. The bitch is a mental case who needs to sent to the asylum. I am feeling sleepy. I am going to have some shut eye. Wake me up when we reach my apartment. She tells me, I was taking you to the hotel where I am staying. I tell her, no, I just want to go to my place. You can drop me off to my place and leave. I want to be alone. I am not ready to live with you. Like I said, I need time. Max will. I am not ready to move on in the life, forgetting the things I suffered, because they are the part of my life too. She tells me in a gentle voice. I am tired. I can't talk anymore, please. Just drop me to my apartment. Okay, you can sleep. I will drop you off to your apartment. I tell her stroking her hairs. She nodded her head and closed her eyes and felt sleep. I looked at her with a smile on my face and placed my hand on her belly. I was holding my family in my arms and I promise that I will always cherish it in my life. There is nothing I want any more than her and the baby. I closed my eyes and fell asleep too. I was woken up by my driver. Mr. Collins, we have reached. The driver announced opening the door for me. I nodded my head and scooped Kayla in my arms. I didn't bother to wake her up because she was sleeping so peacefully. I carried her in my arms bridal style to her apartment where I found Jacob and Anna already waiting. Jacob opened the door for Kayla's apartment. Thank you. I mouthed when he ignored giving me a death glare. She hates us because of you. She is like a sister to me, Max. You hurt her again, and I swear I will kill you friend or not. Jacob threatened in a low voice. I will talk to you in the morning, because I don't want to wake her up. I won't hurt her. I tell Jacob and entered the apartment. I took her to her bedroom and laid her down on the bed gently. I took off her sandals and looked around the apartment. It looked messy. Kayla likes to keep things clean just like me, but it seems like she is getting too tired and not keeping the things up. Good night, baby girl. I kissed her for it, then get to work and cleaned her apartment whole night. When I was done and looking at my woman I observed that she was feeling uncomfortable in her cliss during the sleep, so I looked into her cupboard and found a silk knee-length nighty. I picked it up and changed her clothings, or more like struggled, because it was really hard to do that with a hit getting distracted, or waking her up. But I managed to do so and fell asleep bestie her peacefully after a very long time. Ayla Lewis I woke up in my apartment feeling so lazy and weak. I needed to use the bathroom, so I stepped out of the bed and found myself dressed up in my silk knee-length comfy nighty. I remember falling asleep in the car in Maxwell's arms, and after that I don't remember what happened, because I was dead tried stressed, upset and so many things. Good morning baby girl. I see you are awake. How are you feeling now? Maxwell, 
asked, bringing a glass of fresh fruit juice in the room. He placed it on the table beside the bed and reached for me. He wrapped his arms around my waist and leaned down to kiss my forehead. I brought you some freshly squeezed juice prepared by me. He tells me in man, if he doesn't look hot in a black tank top and black trousers, he looks in his early thirties instead of forties. I need to use the bathroom. I tell him, what are you doing here? I didn't leave last night, baby girl. And, before you ask then yes, I changed your clothes and damn you are getting sexier than before. He tells me with a wink. And, those boobs are just well. He teased making me blush and look down. I masked my expression then glared at him. You need to leave I want space I need to be alone. I snapped. I didn't ask you to change my clothes. Neither did I ask you to stay. And if you really wanted to stay then you could have lived next door in the house of the spies. You hired for me. And just so you know I haven't forgiven you. And not planning to do that anytime soon. I said walking towards the bathroom and slammed the door shut. I am not going anywhere woman. I heard him shout from outside, making me roll my eyes and groan because I know he won't go anywhere without me. After doing my business, I stepped into the shower and took a long shower on purpose, hoping Maxwell will leave. After taking the shower, I wrapped the towel round my body and stood in front of the mirror where I blow-dried my hair. Once. I was done I turned up the dryer and stepped out of the bathroom to find silence. I let out a breathe of relief, thinking Maxwell, must have left and headed inside the closet. I put in my undergarments and my black maternity bodycon dress, then stepped out of Hayte closet to find Maxwell sitting on the edge of my bed and looked at me from head to toe and lets out a whistle. Wow, you look beautiful. He complimented with a smile on his face. You. What are you doing over here? And where did you get this trouser and tank top from because I don't remember you bringing any clothes with you? I asked. I borrowed it from Jacob. He replied with a shrug. And, you didn't drink your juice. And, you didn't leave. I snapped. You need to leave now. I need to go to work and open my shop. I am already getting flaked. You are not going anywhere. You are going to rest and have breakfast first. Maxwell orders making me glare at him with clenched fist in anger. Who the hell is he to order me? I am not his servant or his employee. How dare you order me sitting in my apartment and on my bed? I yelled. Leave now. I am your fiancé and the fatir of your baby, and, I am not ordering you I am just telling you for your own good. You look tired and in need of rest. Maxwell said getting up on his feet. I am not tired. I am stressed because of you and your presence around me. I shout. Just leave, I don't want you here Andy. You are not fiancé because I remember returning my ring to you the same day you proposed. I will leave once you are done having breakfast and as for the ring, I still carry around in my pants pocket, with hope that you will ask for it one day again. He shouts at from a bathroom and slammed the door shut. I let out a groan of frustration and stepped out of my bedroom to find my whole house organized and clean from every single corner. I was looking around when I was hit by an amazingly fresh aroma, only to find the table served with my favorite breakfast items I love. Maxwell cooked all of this and cleaned the whole place, just to make me feel comfortable and well-rested. Should I thank him or not? Nay, nah, I should not. He will be fine without out because he knows he deserves it. I sat down and began to eat in a hurry because I was really damn hungry since I didn't eat anything last night. Well, it's good to see you eating.
I heard Maxwell's voice, who just stepped out of the bathroom, showered with towel, wrapped around his waist, looking devilishly handsome. I stopped eating to admire his his body, when I see Maxwell grinning arrogantly, and winked at me to tease me. I blushed and kept on eating. Yeah, I am eating only because you didn't let me eat last night, due to your sudden presence. I said shrugging my should taking a bite of my French toast. Eat some fruits too and drink the whole glass of milk. It is good for you and the baby's health. He said taking seat in front of me and served him breakfast on the plate. He began to pick the French toast when I picked the whole dish and dragged it in front of me. Mine. I tell him like a baby and heard him laugh. Okay, yours. Eat it. He said between laugh and took a sip of the juice he poured for himself in the glass. Maxwell Collins. After Kayla and I were done having breakfast, I picked up the dishes and took them to the dishwasher in the kitchen while Kayla went to pick her stuff up. No matter how much I tried to stop her and asked her to rest, she didn't listen to anything and acted as the stubborn woman she is. I know she wants to establish herself, but first, she has to think of her health and the baby. She can do whatever she wants to do after the baby is born, and I will support her in it. I will support her with everything and for that even, if I have to become a living father, I will become one to make her a powerful and career-oriented woman. I was just done washing the dishes when my phone rang. When I looked at the caller ID, I looked around to make sure Kayla is not around, and once I was sure I received the cow and placed it on my ear. Yes, I told you not to cow me, because I will cow you myself. I hissed at the person on the other end of the phone. I wouldn't have if your prisoner hasn't escaped. The man uninced on the phone. But, good thing is he doesn't remember anything so, we don't need to worry about him. What? How can he run away like this? Can't you even do a one task properly? I whisper yelled over the phone and ran my hand on my face in worry. I will be back to New York as soon as I can. With that said I ended the cow and when I turned around I stopped dead in my tracks to find Kayla standing by the doorway, looking at me with curious gaze. Who were you talking on the phone, and who ran away? She asked. You looked worried. What happened? What else are you hiding from me, Max? Nothing. I am not hiding anything, my love. It was just a cow from the company manager. He was telling me that one of the architect employee that we just hired ran away leaving the project in the middle. I lied instantly while trying to play it cool. Kayla can never come to know about Drake being alive. Well, at least not now when she is already pissed of at me. Oh, I am sure then you must have more best architect in the company. They can work on it so just relax and get out of my house. She was kicking me out with the sweet talk. The woman is hilarious when she is angry. I was already leaving after doing the dishes. Can I at least drop you off to work, since you are not going to go with Jacob and Anna, as you are considering them your enemies, when in reality, they are more than your friends. They really care about you, Kyles. They refused my offer when I offered them to pay. I tried to defend Jacob and Anna. Still, they should have told me. Or you could have asked them to let me know your plan, but no. Instead, you kept it all to your slip, thinking you would become a hero by doing it yourself. Well, newsflash, you just became a villain instead of a hero in my life. And I can order the cab. She snapped. I don't need your help in any way. I will buy myself a car today, or maybe even a huge mansion to live in here. Hire some guards who won't let you enter my house and kick your butt. Well, 
You planned all that in one night. I asked shocked. No, I planned all that in five minutes, when I come to know that I inherited my father's inheritance. She replied arrogantly. But, if you really want to be my driver for the day then, by all means drop me then never show me your face again. Fine, let me get dressed since I am still in the towel. Give me five minutes but get one thing in your mind. I am not going anywhere without you. I will be wherever you are. I know I made so many mistakes, thinking I was doing the right thing, and I am ready to make it up for them for the rest of my life. I am not going to back up no matter how much to try to push me away. I whispered in her ears, after caging her with my body by the wall. She gulped because of the closeness. Please, step back. She orders in barely an audible voice. Why? Why should I baby girl? Because you might want to push me away, but your body is begging for something else. I murmured while kissing her cheek, when all of a sudden, he stomped her heels on my foot. Boy. Woman. What was that for? That is for being an asshole who thinks our bodies can fix everything by having sex. She yells. You have got only three minutes left. Put on something and drop me of otherwise I am going by myself. She threatened. Kayla Lewis. Maxwell stopped the car in front of my shop, and I began to get out of the car, when Maxwell grabbed me by my arm and stopped me gently, with a smile on his face, and pointed at his cheek. What? I asked annoyed. Kiss my cheek, baby girl. He tells me making me groan and roll my eyes. I am not kissing you, Max. I tell when in reality... It was his lips that I needed to kiss at the moment, instead of his cheeks, but I need to act tough. I am not going to forgive him any time soon. Come on, baby girl. I am just asking for a kiss on the cheek, instead of the lips, when I so badly want to devour that mouth of yours. It feels like I haven't kissed you in forever. He tells me. I ignored him and began to get inside my shop when Maxwell spun me around so that I was facing him and suddenly smashed his lips on mine for a deep kiss, taking me by surprise and just like always I got lost into it and found myself kissing him back as I closed my eyes and enjoyed the moment. I have missed this. Missed him. Miss the time we spend together. Miss the memories. Missed everything. Suddenly, I remembered everything that happened to me after he proposed me and promised to spend his whole life with me but proved wrong after a few minutes. I pulled back from the kiss and pushed him away in anger after slapping on his face with tears in my eyes. I told you I need space. Leave me alone. Stop using me for fuck's sake, or I will begin to hate you. And I don't want to do that because you are my baby's father. I yelled at him and entered in my shop, then slammed the door shut. I began to breathe heavily and tremble in anger, with tears falling freely from my eyes. I tried to hold myself back from bursting out crying but couldn't do that and fell down on my knees when I felt someone's presence in my shop and picked up the vase in my hand for precaution and began to look around. Who is there? Who is it? I asked looking around and took out my phone at the same time to call Max hoping he is nearby. Tell me I am calling the cops. I threatened to whoever was present in my shop. From the corner of my eyes, through the mirror, I saw the two persons I really care about and yet consider them as my enemy when they are not. I know they do care for me, but at least they could have told me the truth. I placed the vase back on its place on the desk and chuckled when I saw both of them let out a sigh of relief. 
Did they really think I would have killed them with a vase, when all of a sudden, I was hit by the memory, when I killed my boss with the vase? Kayla Lewis, what are you two doing in my shop? Leave, I don't want to talk to you, or see you guys I considered you both as my friends and decided to trust you, when I wasn't trusting anyone and guess what? Like always I was kept blinded. I got betrayed once again by the ones I considered as my siblings. I said placing my bag behind the counter of my shop, then turned around to look at Anna and Jacob standing by the glass window of my shop with guilty looking expression with their heads hung low. We don't know what to say except that we never betrayed you. You should ask Maxwell what we told him. We told him to fuck of and even refused to get paid by him for looking after you because we were doing that by our heart. After meeting you we realized that you were broken and in need of a friend. So we decided to become your friends instead of the investigators hired by Maxwell to look after you. We took care of you and did what we do by our heart. We never lied to you. Just kept that Maxwell hired us, but trust us we refused him and his offer. Whatever we were doing was because we wanted to not, because we were asked to. Anna said taking steps forward, Kayla, I don't know how to ask for your forgiveness, but you said you consider me as your sister, so sisters, makes mistakes then they forgive one another so please forgive me and give me a chance to prove myself to you that I really care for you and consider you as my sister please don't break your friendship with us Jacob and I haven't slept a wink in worry that you are never going to talk to us we love you like our own siblings so please forgive us Anna pleaded reaching forward to me with misty eyes I love you sister Please don't stop talking to us, because it breaks our heart and shatters into pieces. Kayla, when I first helped you I felt like helping my sister I never had. You are just like a sister to me, because you remind me of my sister, who died in my arms pledging me to save her. But I couldn't I couldn't I tried to save her. But I couldn't because her brain tumor was incurable. I was in a dark place for a very long time after losing my little sister until Anna comes into my life and helped me come back to the light. We fell in love and got engaged, but even after that I prayed to God to give me a sister anyway. He can when Maxwell called us to look after you. We agreed at first, but when I helped you from falling for the first time, and saw you I felt like I got my sister back, because she resembled you a lot, and that moment I promised myself to keep you safe forever, and always no matter what happens. After helping you that day I headed back to my apartment, and refused to Maxwell's, offer saying I will help him only because I want to help you with my heart not because someone asked me to do it please don't leave us please give us a chance to prove us that we really love you and care about you and the baby please forgive us we can't bear another moment knowing you are angry at us and not going to forgive us Jacob begged for forgiveness I I was suddenly cut off by a man Ma'am, get down. Kayla Lewis. Before I can talk any further out of nowhere one of Maxwell's guard appeared in front of me and pushed me under the table when I heard the gunshots. I forget about everything and looked around for Anna and Jacob, who were nowhere to be found when my eyes landed on the floor, to find Jacob lying on the floor shot on his stomach breathing for air while Anna was dragging him inside the table and keeping the pressure on his bullet wound at the same time. Jacob, I cried out loud and Ben to reach fro him when Jacob shook his head. No, stay there. Don't come out, Jacob said in painful voice. 
the hell I am? I yelled when Anna glared at me. He said stay there. Nothing will happen to you. Anna yelled back. You keep yourself covered. Leave me and help them. Take Jacob to the hospital. He is shot. I ignored Jacob and Anna, then ordered Maxwell's guard, who shook his head and refused to leave me while talking on the cowl with someone or maybe Maxwell. I am afraid I can't do that I have got orders from Mr. Collins to keep you protected at every cost. You are the first priority. He apologized and shot whoever was shooting on my shop to shoot me. Why will anyone want to kill me? I don't have got any enemy or anything, and why all of a sudden this is pinning with me? Fine, then if you can't help them then I will. I snapped when I realized I can't put my life in danger, because that way, I will be hurting my child too but I can't watch Jacob, struggling to live, and Anna struggling to save her fiancé with tears in her eyes. I need to do something. Without thinking I went running to them, and in the process, I got shot on my shoulder and screamed in pain as I felt the burning pain all over my shoulder and watched the blood flow. Kayla! Jacob and Anna screamed when they saw me getting shot in fear. I reached them and get down oh my knees putting pressure on my shoulder where I just got shot. It's fine the bullet just grazed over my shoulder. I am fine. I tell them and look towards the secret exit of the shop. Let's take Jacob from the secret exit. He needs to go to the hospital right now. We can't let anything happen to him. I said looking around to find something like a weapon or any sharp object to fight. I am not going anywhere leaving you alone. I have already lost one sister, and I can't lose you to even if I survive. I won't be able to live if anything happens to me, because I will feel guilty that I couldn't save you Jot, like I couldn't save my sister, I will feel useless. Jacob refused to go then looked at Anna. Anna, be strong and see if she is just grazed or really shot. No, trust me. I am fine and nothing will happen to me. I have got Marco over here. He will keep me safe. I tried to calm Jacob. And, hey, I don't hate you guys. I was just angry. I forgive you. I forgive you both. But, please don't die on me. I need you guys. I pleaded. I can't live if anything happens to you knowing I was the reason for your death. Maxwell Collins after dropping Kayla to her shop, I was lost in my thoughts and hurt by her words. How can she think that I am using her? I can never use her for my benefit or anything. I love her so much and everything I do, I do it for her. I had just parked my car and entered my company branch located in Italy when I got a cow from Marco, the guard that I hired for Kayla. I picked it up and placed it on my ear while I was heading inside the conference room. Yes, Marco, what happened? Is everything okay? Is Kayla all right? I asked him when I heard the gun shots from the backgrounds and stopped dead in my tracks, forgetting everything I just heard the gunshots and one thought came into my mind. To keep Kayla and our baby safe. I turned around instantly and ran towards the elevator as fast as I can. It was like I was running a marathon. I opened my private elevator and headed down and get back into my Ferrari. I stepped my foot on the gas pedal and raced the road in full speed, breaking all the Travis rules. Mr. Collins, just like you asked for I was keeping an eye on Miss Lewis. She had just entered her shop and was busy talking with her friends when I saw a car stop outside of her shop window and several men came out holding the gun. Before they can start shooting I pulled Miss Lewis under the table on time, but her friend just got shot. 
I'm a outnumbered please, reach ye fast and kill the cops. In the meantime, I will try to hold this man back from hurting Miss Lewis. Keep Caleb protected with your life. I swear if anything happens to her then I am going to kill you. She is pregnant for God's sake keep her and my baby safe. I ordered. I'm on my way. With that said I ended the cow and opened my dashboard to take out my gun from the hidden compartment of my car and cursed out loud banging my hand on the steering well in fear of anything happening to my woman. I can't bear to lose her. I can't bear to lose our baby. Who are these people and why are they attacking her? What do they want from her? I was driving in full speed, not caring that I could meet an accident or die. I dialed the cops and gave them the address and asked them to reach there as soon as they can. Kayla baby. Hold on. I'm coming I won't anything happen to you I swear. I will keep you and our baby safe. I will die but won't let anything happen to you. I murmured to myself and almost got crashed into a truck, but dodged it fortunately and continued to drive towards my destination. My woman, my baby, Ayla Lewis. Okay, this is not helping. We are losing him by staying sitting over here and doing nothing. We need to reach to the exit any way we can. Let's pick him up and take him through the back door. I said helping Anna in picking up Jacob, who just passed out on us, due to excessive amount of blood flow, when Anna shook her head, with tears of fear in her eyes. I won't let anything to her fiancé. No, he is too heavy for you to hold. You are pregnant. You can't put your or the baby's life in danger. If anything happens to you then Jacob will never forgive me. I will never forgive myself, because we really do consider you as our little sister, and can't see you in any kind of pain. Anna said between sobs, then looked at Jacob. My love, please hold on to me. Please fight. You can't leave me, I will take you out of here. Just hold on to me. Marco, come over here and help us take him out of here. I ordered Marco who was trying to take the target and shoot the man who were shooting us from outside. Miss Lewis, please get behind the counter. If anything happens to you then boss will kill me. He said while reaching for me and dragged me behind the counter as he shoots outside of my shop's window. I looked round to see my whole shop was ruined and messed up in the worst way possible. Who are these people? I asked. You need to do something and take them out of here. I pleaded. He will die. And, I swear to God, that if you don't get my friends out of here, I will be the first one to kill you before Maxwell can now help them, or I will help them myself. You can't keep me here if you are not going to help them. Mr. Collins is on his way, Miss Lewis. I talked to him. He will be here with the cops in no time. Please just bear a little more, he informed me the looked outside. I shake my head in denial and pointed at my friends. He groaned and nodded his head, because I wasn't cooperating with him or going easy on him. I know I am putting my and my baby's life in danger, but Jacob's life matters too. He has been there for me when I needed him the most now. I need to be there for him. Fine. Marco snapped. I will try to get these two out of here because their target is you. They are after you but please miss. Lewis, don't get out of here until Mr. Collins arrives. Okay, I will stay here just do something and get them out of here help them. I pleaded looking at Jacob and Anna with tears in my eyes as I remembered the memories I shared with them. With Jacob and how he took care of me as an elder brother. If anything happens to him, then I will never be able to forgive myself. 
If I hadn't been angry at them, they wouldn't have been here, and Jacob wouldn't have got shot. Kayla Lewis I was hiding behind the counter of my shop with tears in my eyes and felt my body trembling. I was scared. I wasn't scared for my life. I was scared for my baby's life that was growing inside of me. I don't want anything happen to him, her. Or I won't be able to bear it. I placed my hand on my belly protectively and prayed the God to do some miracle or send me help. I rubbed my hand in circle on my belly and talked to my baby. Hey, don't be scared, my baby. Mommy will protect you. Mommy won't let anything happen to you. I talked to my baby when I felt a gun placed on my head, and my lips trembled, and my hands shook in fear. Miss Lewis, we won't harm you if you get up and agree to go with us willingly. A man who was placing the gun on my head said, Who are you and what do you want from me? Please let me go. I am pregnant. Please don't hurt my baby. I pleaded. I didn't do anything to anyone then why are you guys trying to kill me and my friends? I don't even know who you are and who sent you please. I beg you to let me go just show some mercy. I begged holding my belly tightly when all of a sudden I heard a gunshot from behind me and saw the man fall down on the ground screaming in pain, holding his shoulder which began to bleed. I looked at the man shot, then turned around slowly to find none other than Maxwell standing over there holding the gun along with the cops behind him. Marco was right. Maxwell came and brought the cops. He came. He came to save me. To save us. He is the knight in my shining armor and always there to save me whenever I am in trouble. Stay away from her. I heard the voice of Maxwell and instantly felt relieved. I got back on my feet and went running to him and threw my arms around him. Maxwell hugged me back and kissed on my forehead as I burst out crying in his arms and felt safe at the same time because I knew he will not let anything happen to me or the baby. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I don't don't know who they are they just SDRT shooting at us. I said between sobs, Maxwell Collins. I hugged my woman tightly in my arms and showered her with the kisses because I was so scared that something is going to happen to her. I was scared for the baby, but not scared as much as I was for Kayla. She hugged me tight too and smashed her lips on mine as she cried during the kiss in fear of something happening to her and the baby but she doesn't know that I won't let anything happen to her until I am alive. I fucking live for her, and I will fucking die for her. She means everything to me. Hey hey, it's alright you are fine. The baby is fine. I am here. The cops are here. I tell her pointing behind me, where the cops were standing surrounding the area, and holding the shooters. I cupped her face and made her look into my eyes. Jacob and Anna has been taken to the hospital. They will be fine. Nothing is going to happen to them and what the hell. Kyles, why did you send Marco? Isn't your life precious? You always act selfless. Listen to me. Your life is precious than any of us. No matter what you are going to put yourself first than others. You heard me. I scolded her. The woman think of others before herself always. They helped me and Anna was crying because they are so in love with one another. And I can't let the two loved ones get separated. Because of me, it is really hard to find a true love these days. And they both share one. And, beside, I consider them as my brother and sister so I couldn't watch my siblings die right in front of my eyes. I needed to get them out of here, or Jacob would have died right here, and I couldn't watch him die, so whatever I did I did right, and I will always do that.
everyone's life is precious not just mine. Because just like me everyone else to get only one life. She tells me making me groan and roll my eyes. This woman will be the death of me. No, we share the true love. You just don't know it yet maybe. You need to be reminded and I will do that but first I need to find out. Who the hell tried to attack? What's mine? I will fucking kill them. I growled looking at the wounded man lying on the ground. The man that I just shot. I let go of Kayla and walked towards him. I get down on my one knee and held him by his throat as I placed my gun on top of his head. Tell me who sent you before I put the bullets in your head. I threatened. I will rather die than telling you. All you need to know is that Kayla doesn't belongs to you, but someone else she is someone else property. Not yours. The man announced. Nathaniel Sutton. Does that ring any bells to you, miss? Kayla Lewis. What name did you just take? Nathaniel Sutton. You mean Nate? Kayla asked shocked. He is dead. He died. I watched him die. It is not possible. She said holding the table for support. But, he never died. He is alive and coming to get you miss. Lewis. The man announced and Kayla let out a gasp of shock. It's impossible he can't be alive you are lying. Tell me you are lying. Don't play with me. She shout. I have just recovered a few years ago from the trauma of his death. And you are giving me hope over here that he might be alive. Tell me the truth. Why well, will ask Maxwell to pull the trigger? Kayla Lewis. After hearing the name of Nathaniel Sutton, I became frozen at my place and went back to the memories I shared with Nate when we were just children. Nate and I were the best friends. We were always fine together. Nate and my father were best friends, so our family was too close. We went to the school together and took high school, graduation degree together. But later, he went to Harvard Law School to become a lawyer, and I went to Yale. Nate was always my knight in shining armor and very protective over me. I thought of him as my older brother because he was always there for me whenever I needed him the most. But one day, when Nate and I were returning from our family's charity gala, we met with an accident, and I found myself waking up on the hospital bed when I was given the heartbreaking news of my life that Nate didn't survive and died. We used to play at the Malibu beach all the time, where Nate promised to make me his bride one day, when we were just eight years old. But as we began to grow up, I decided to see Nate as my older brother instead of anything else. No, you're lying don't take the name of my dead best friend to save your life my Nate was always protective of me and will never dare OT harm me or more like send any men to kill me. He is dead. He died in a car accident. I yelled kicking the man on his ribs. You are lying. I cried. You are lying, you scumbag. No, he is not my sugar, because I am alive and you are right. I will never send anyone to harm or kill you. I send them to bring you to me, and ask to kill whoever tries to stop you from coming to me. I heard the sound of Nathaniel and turned around to find him standing alive, with a smile on his face. Hello sugar, did you miss me? He asked holding his arms open for me, hoping I will jump into them, after what he just told me and how I jut saw him standing alive after five years of my life. And they Nate. Hey, how is this possible? It's impossible you can't be alive you died. You fucking died. You are not Nate. You are his imposter or something. Tell me who you really are. I asked shocked mowing closer to Maxwell's arms. Who is he Kayla? 
Maxwell asked possessively and protectively shielding me behind his back as he gave a death glare to Nate. Who are you and what do you want her? She is mine, my woman, the mother of my child so you back of before I kill you. I am not letting you take her away from me. Trust me, whoever you are. You don't want to mess with me do you know who I am? Of course I know who you are. You are the pervert fucking a young girl who can be compared to your daughter but no, the pervert like you knocked her up making her your baby's mother when she should be the one who should be your daughter. Nate snapped. Shut up, Nate apologized to him. Right now. I love him so you better respect him, or I will kill you. I threatened. Seriously, sugar. What is wrong with you? How can you fall for this old man? Your father would have been disappointed on you. Nate snapped back then apologized. I am sorry. I didn't mean to snap at you. Fuck of Nate. And, it doesn't matter if he would have been disappointed at me. Because he died disappointed at me. So it doesn't change the fact for once. Can anyone let me live my life according to myself? I yelled when I felt a sharp pain in my stomach and placed my hand on it with tears of unbearable pain building in my eyes. Ugh. I screamed holding my belly, and doubled out in pain. Nate was trying to reach for me concerned, when Maxwell pushed him away and pulled me to him.